Scott's helping with something we've uh, put into uh, Alex's car. We've got this little Bluetooth receiver here. So it's got USB power there and aux out. So that's three and a half mil stereo jack plug and that feeds into the car stereo aux input. Uh, could you just play some music for me, Scott? Uh, all right. What do you think of the sound? Put your head in the middle. not great. It's not great, is it? Just sounds a bit rubbish. Uh, could you put up a stereo test for me, left-right stereo test on that for me? You should be hearing this out of only the left side. You should be hearing this out of only the right side. What do you think, Scott? You should be hearing this from... Well, there's, there's no difference between the left and right channels. No, so it's mono and it sounds really weird in the middle. Yes. Okay, let's try listening to something, uh, go back to my uh, outro music, using something that does work properly. We've got this uh, uh, Alexa uh, mobile device. Let's try that in the car and see what it sounds like. Well, that sounds massively better, doesn't it, yes. on this device? And you can actually hear the stereo effect from here. So um, clearly this device is not right. It's putting out mono audio and it sounds like the, the channels are out of phase with each other. Whereas this is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, to prove the point, we'll just do the left right channel thing yeah, again. Yeah, okay. You should be hearing this out of only the left side. You should be hearing this out of only the right side. That's perfect, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that's perfect. Okay, we're going to have to investigate what's going on in the uh, Bluetooth receiver. Yep. We bought a little gadget for Alex's new car. Uh, it goes from USB power to audio out, and in here is a Bluetooth receiver. So we thought we could play music out of his phone and get it in nice quality stereo for his car. But it didn't work out because, for one thing, this thing's only mono, but it seems to have two channels. It sounded absolutely awful. You put your head in the middle of the speakers and it sounded out of phase. Sure enough, give it a one kilohertz signal and the two channels are out of phase. The audio also sounds and looks noisy. I put up a poll on YouTube uh, community and asked you guys if you'd like me to just uh, send this back or dismantle it and investigate what's going on. And you guys voted for me to dismantle it and investigate. So let's do just that. Right, the first challenge is getting it apart, and I want to do so reasonably non-destructively because I'd like to be able to test it while it's dismant dismantled to see if we can see what the signals are doing. Um, so I'm going to have to put some sort of blade in there, I think, to uh, split the case. Hopefully I'll still have the same amount of fingers when I've finished. Ah, yeah, that's coming apart okay. Okay, so uh, it appears to be all built onto one chip. Let's uh, take a closer look and uh, maybe we can work out why it's such a, a dreadful thing. Taking a close look at this part, it's made by some manufacturer, JL, uh, which didn't mean much to me at first, but I have worked out who actually made it. And the part number, uh, well, that's a very confusing thing because it's got all this AB codswallop here. And that doesn't mean a lot. It turns out that it's the dash 69A2 that's important. And the part of the device is actually you add uh, AC69 to the beginning of that part number. So the part we have is an AC6969A revision 2. You know, in a former life, I used to write the test programs for the automatic test equipment that would test uh, mixed signal ICs like this with DACs and ADCs. Uh, so one thing I want to get across is it's not a junky part. It's actually quite a good part they've used here. Right, so let's look at the uh, data sheet for this. It's got a reasonable CPU in there, a 32-bit DSP support. You've got... DSP processing which includes MP3 and MP4 and WAVE and FLAC and uh, 
It's got acoustic noise cancelling and 10 band equalization. And then the audio codex, this is important. Two channel DAX, so you've got stereo audio out and a one channel ADC for microphone input and a sampling rate up to 48 kilohertz, which is higher than CD. A microphone amplifier can do a mic bias as well, so you could even potentially run professional grade microphones such as the one I'm using here. Outputs can be, you know, capless and single-ended differential, and it can drive speaker directly. And you've got all the Bluetooth stuff uh, and uh, an extra 10-bit ADC in there. So this is actually quite a sophisticated part. Uh, they may only cost pennies, but there's a lot to it. And this clearly has been designed to be of, of usable quality, even though the end product that it's in is not usable quality. So just check we have the right part. Pin seven should be the Bluetooth RF. So that's the antenna there to the Bluetooth. So that's correct. Uh, we should have the oscillators on pins 9 and 10, well we can't quite see, but it certainly looks like that's one of them, and the other track I think goes under the chip to here. So that's pins 9 and 10 dealt with. Pins 11 and 12 are for USB and I think just function, any other function. So we've got that running out to the LED I think, so it flashes the LED on those general purpose pins. Uh, and then we have the important ones, DAC right and DAC left are on 13 and 14, and they're associated ground out. So pins 13 and 14 are here, and they go to these capacitors, so they'll be DC blocking capacitors, and then uh, resistors, I think these are a resistor divider to reduce the output, I suspect. Uh, and then they go out to the left and right channels here. Uh, and then we have the DAC VSS. So this should be the ground. This one here should be the ground that goes out to the audio. And it is. But since the resistors for the divider network or attenuator, um, they have their ground on the main board ground uh, any digital noise is going to affect the left and right output signals so I'm not sure they've grounded it properly but it probably wouldn't help much anyway if it had been grounded correctly because all grounds are going to be equal when you consider that the 5 volt supply here you know it comes from a USB plug uh, and that USB plug is going to be connected to cars either internal 5 volt supply if it has one or it's going to be um, a you know, 12 volt to 5 volt uh, adapter and the ground for that is just going to be the battery ground level and that's going to be the same as the uh, ground here on the, the jack so it's all going to be one common ground anyway so any noise anywhere is all going to finish up in the same system so I don't know why it's noisy and we also have this question about what's going on here then. You know, we've got this left and right output here. Surely they come from internal DACs on the chip. And they should be true stereo. So uh, let's have a little bit more of a look at the uh, data sheet for the part. You know, we've confirmed we have the right part now. It says it supports capless, single-ended and differential mode at the DAC path and all of a sudden it's starting to make some sense. You know what's happened here. This is capable of being a proper stereo receiver but it's configured for push-pull output. So they would be out of phase. <laughs> it's configured for mono push-pull. The chip is capable of being stereo, but it used it in the wrong way. Probably used one with the wrong uh, firmware. So it's in push-pull mode instead of true stereo mode. That's what's wrong. And it's not something we can fix.
So I was about to set up the oscilloscope to see if I could trace back exactly what's going on here, but now it's become incredibly obvious. There's nothing wrong with the chip, and there's nothing wrong with the PCB, which is reasonably well engineered. The problem is firmware, that someone specified in the firmware on there that this chip is to be configured for push-pull mode, which would be work great for driving a single mono speaker, for example, if you wanted a speaker for a Bluetooth hands-free kit, so that you could hear a voice of someone on the other end of a phone. Uh, and there is a microphone input option on this as well, so that would be correct for that use case. But this use case is that it's supposed to be stereo, and you wouldn't want it in push-pull mode. So the manufacturer of the chip are not at fault, they make good quality parts. I'm somewhat confused as to why there's so much noise, and maybe that's just because of the way it's been used incorrectly, but uh, I don't believe that the part itself is an inherently bad product. I don't believe that the board is inherently bad. It seems to be reasonably well engineered and has more options as well for the for microphone input. Um, the LEDs doesn't line up very well with the case, but other than that, I've got no complaints with the actual engineering in here. What's happened is somebody's messed up and almost certainly either specified the wrong firmware or uh, have themselves written the firmware incorrectly and used the um, push-pull mono output configuration instead of the true stereo one. Now, a quick workaround for this is, well, you could throw the whole thing away, but actually we've ordered from, uh, from China a replacement board, may physically not quite fit in the case, we'll have to worry about that later, but it's got the same functionality and a slightly different chip made by the same manufacturer, it's got a slightly higher pin count, uh, and that is quite uh, specifically listed as true stereo. So we'll fit that on here and that'll solve the problem, and that's like two pounds something, so easy fix really but I thought that was quite an interesting uh, diagnosis there you know I'd originally thought that the chip was stereo and someone had done the board incorrectly and messed that up but it wasn't the case it was the case on a previous product which I looked at some oh years ago now where I had a pair of uh, wireless microphones and they fed two independent channels to a receiver but the receiver could only put out mono. They did a 50-50 mix, and I thought that was a bit rubbish. I wanted individual channels to be recorded on the camera. And it literally required two or three passive components to be added to convert that to true stereo. The chip inside was capable of doing real stereo, and it was just the board that was letting it down. Though, in that case, coincidentally with this, uh, it had a noise problem. I couldn't resolve the noise problem and ended up going out and buying some much more expensive microphones, wireless microphones from Rode. Now, why do we have noise on this? Um, it might be that the noise doesn't matter if you're driving just a speaker. The noise will all cancel out anyway when you're in uh, push-pull mode. So, there's nothing we can do with this but learn from it. And uh, I think it's been a fascinating experience. Right, I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Some weeks ago I had some PCBs made and here's one that's been populated for use with old Philips and some Grundig model video recorders from the 1970s such as the N1502, N1700 and SVR4004 because those machines don't have video output sockets on them. But there were some possible improvements I could have done to this on Special reflection. Delivery. Ooh, good. Maybe we have version 1.1 of the circuit board. 
updates include uh, better mounting for the circuit board itself, uh, better anchoring of cables coming in and out, optionally an LED so that you can see that the board is powered up, uh, updated markings which include the SVR 4004 and the voltage ratings of the components for that. Uh, if you'd like I'll uh, build up one of these and fit it to a N1700 so you can see that one work and we can sell some of these to anybody who needs them. I think there's enough boards here to probably equip all of the uh, machines left on the planet that still require video output circuits added to them.